Good evening and welcome to your third video in Chapter 11. Today we are going to continue looking at the gas laws that we started last class. So let's look at a brief recap of what we did or the laws that we were introduced to last class. So we have Boyle's Law. And Boyle's Law gave us PV equals K. Then we had Charles's Law. And that equaled V over T. And it was also related to a constant K. And then we finished with Gay-Lussac's Law. And Gay-Lussac's law said we had P over T. Hmm, and it was also equal to K. So instead of maybe looking at all of these different gas laws, maybe there's a way we could combine these because they're all equal to K, which means K would be the same for any gas that's the same. So if we were looking at oxygen, Boyle's, Charles, and Gay-Lussac's K is all going to be the same. So what if we try to combine them? Well, we know we see a P here and a P here. We've got a V here and a V here. And then both of these both have a temperature. So what if we started putting this together? So we've got V over T. Here I've got P over T. So T is probably the same T. So I'm going to put pressure back on top. And then I see I do multiply pressure and volume. Hmm. I have combined these into one equation. And that equation is known as, go figure, the combined gas law. So PV over T equals K. Now can we do the same thing we did last time since everything's equal to K, have initial and change conditions? Of course we can. The trickiest thing with this equation, we're going to work it the same way. We've got equal fractions, so we cross, multiply, and divide. What's going to trip you up probably is when your X, let's say, is this V. So it's one of your variables on the top. So what I would do, and this is me, you guys have different ways of doing this. When I plug it in my calculator, if I want to solve for V2, let's put it up here. I'm going to take P1 V1 times T2. So I'm cross multiplying. Then I'm going to divide. Well, if I can cross multiply this way and I could cross multiply this way, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to divide it by T1 times P2. And that's going to give me V2. So there's a nice little shortcut or way to set up a problem when you're solving for one of the variables on top. Because again, if I just multiplied the two sides, I would have PVT equals TP and V. So again, I'm just manipulating the problem so that I only have to really do one stroke in my calculator and not have to worry about um, a bunch of different numbers in my calculator. Then we have Dalton's Law. Dalton's Law is going to be a little bit different from the other laws. So when we're looking at Dalton's Law, it's the total pressure of a mixture of gases is equal to the sum of the partial pressures of the component gases. So basically, this is how we get that atmospheric pressure. We know the atmosphere is full of a bunch of gases, so how do we get that pressure? What we're going to do is we're going to add up the pressure of each gas. That's the partial pressure. So PT just means P total. And then P1, P2, P3, and P4 would be the pressure of all those 
other gases. So if we want to know total atmospheric pressure, we would take the pressure of each individual gas, add them all together, and that gives us our total. So nice, simple, straightforward. You got a container full of four different gases, add the pressures of each gas up, and that's the pressure in your container. Now sometimes, or often, especially in your lab, if we're going to collect gases and know that we've collected enough gas, we collect it by water displacement. If you have water displacement, you're going to have water vapor because there's this constant equilibrium between the gas phase and the liquid phase. So you're going to have water vapor that's going to mix with the gases you have collected. The water vapor itself, since it's a vapor and it is a gas, is going to have its own pressure. So we have to take that into account. So the pressure of the atmosphere, a simple Dalton's law, pressure of each gas gives me the pressure of the atmosphere. So this is the gas that I'm looking for, the gas I'm collecting, and this is the water vapor. So when we're doing these problems, we're probably going to get the pressure of the atmosphere. We can read it from our barometer or in the case of problems that we will do, this one would be given to us, most likely. P water, so this pressure, we're going to get from the table A8, which can be found in page 859 of your book. Now the pressure that we get from the water is going to be very critical and related to temperature. So we are going to be given a certain temperature at which this reaction was done so that we can collect the gas at a certain temperature. That's going to allow us then to find the pressure of my water. So then, if I know the pressure of the atmosphere, I know the pressure of the water, it's going to allow me to find the pressure of the actual gas I collected. Our last, well not our last law, our second to last law then is Avogadro's law. In Avogadro's law, remember him, he gave us that idea of the mole, says the volumes of gas gaseous reactants and products can be expressed as small ratios of whole numbers. So we also know coefficients of a balanced equation can equal moles, but it can also equal volumes. So now we've got moles, volumes, and of course we know the other one would be molecules. So molar volume, if we can get moles, or our coefficients can equal moles, but they can also equal volume, there is such thing as a molar volume. So this is the volume that is occupied by one mole of gas at STP. Remember this, we talked about this way back in the first video, where this is standard temperature and pressure. So if you remember, your standard temperature was zero degrees Celsius, or 273 Kelvin. And our standard pressure is one atmosphere. So if we are at these conditions, we get a molar volume. So 22.4 liters per mole. So every gas at STP would have 22.4 liters if you have a mole of that gas. So basically equal volumes of gases at the same temperature and pressure, because we're talking about our standards, contain equal numbers of molecules. So, just like before, we have V over N equals K, so another equation that equals a constant. New letter is N, and N is going to represent moles. So we're bringing in that last measurable quantity. We've looked at pressure, volume, temperature. The only one we had yet to talk about is number of particles. Well, now we are going to bring in number of particles. So like before, if we had something equal to K, we can set initial and change conditions. So we have V over N equals V2 over N2. Now can we add that into our new combined equation? Sure. Because what was the combined equation? Now nope, we had P V over T. Well, I have a V here, so V is on top, and I have V on top, so what if I put N on the bottom? 
So we're going to add n to the bottom. And that all equals some constant k. So I could also do initial and change conditions with a further, I guess, combined gas law. However, we are going to change it up again. We are going to call this then the ideal gas law. This idea of that total combined using all four measurable quantities is going to be our ideal gas law. This is the mathematical relationship then among the four quantities, pressure, volume, temperature, and our amount of particles or moles present. So as I just wrote, we had PV divided by NT equals K. So we've got our initial conditions and our change conditions. So to get to the ideal gas law, we are going to take this K and turn it into R. This then depends on the pressure unit. So our R depends on our pressure unit. And the other big change is that our volume must be in liters. So we've been doing a lot with milliliters. So how do we change milliliters into liters? Well, if you have 16 milliliters, milliliters is small. So we are going to move it one, two, three backwards. So this equals 0 0.016 liters. So three backwards. We're going to make this number smaller if we have a milliliters to get it into liters. This then, if we change our K to R and rearrange this equation, we get what I like to call Pevnert. So when you hear me talking about Pevnert, I'm talking about the ideal gas law, PEVNERT. Pressure volume equals N, which is our new one, our moles. R, which is that constant. So again, this is our constant. Remember, we change that from K. And T for temperature. And don't forget, temperature still needs to be in Kelvin. V needs to be in liters. Pressure and R are going to be related. They're going to depend on each other. And then N is in moles. So that's kind of how we're going to use that equation. Now, if we're going to have certain values dependent on pressure, I should probably give those to you. So here are the different R values that we can have. Again, another couple of numbers to memorize. I know you just had four of them uh, for the different pressure units. Well, now we've got three more to remember for our ideal gas law. And these numbers are going to correspond to these pressure units. So do not use these when you're doing pressure conversions. These are just R values. They are not used in conversions. Your pressure conversions are still going to be those four numbers from video one. So do not use these in pressure conversions. These only are used in the ideal gas law. So if your pressure is in MMHG, you're going to use 62.4 as your R value. If your pressure is in atmospheres, you're going to use 0.0821 as your R value. And if you are in kilopascals or pascals, you're going to use 8.314 as your R value. Now, I guess if you want, you could always just memorize one of these. If you memorize just one and know what the number is, let's say atmospheres, that these two numbers always go, to, always go together, then you could change any pressure you have into atmospheres before plugging it into the ideal gas equation. So however you want to do it, that is fine. Uh, that is acceptable. Uh, so if you want, or if you're good at memorizing and you can pick out these three numbers, then you don't have to do any extra conversions. If you just want to memorize one, then you are going to have to do some extra conversions.